Welcome back everybody to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming and in this episode we are going to cultivate field 57 and get it ready for uh, and get it planted uh, for next year's grain crop. We're probably going to go ahead and plant wheat. Um, we really only have, if you think about it, two options. We have wheat and barley. Um, and the reason those are the only two options for us is because um, they're the only two crops that we can use to feed our chickens and also get straw from unless I install a mod that allows us to also make straw from like sorghum, which I might, I might look into. Um, but I think for, for this year, anyways, we're just going to plant wheat. And so if we look at the crop calendar here, um, wheat to do planting season, actually, I guess we can't plant wheat until September. So that being the case, um, I guess we really don't need to do anything at all with that field for now. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think if I planted, say, like hay on it, we could get one hay cutting in August or September. And then we could turn around and, and plant wheat on it at the end of October. Hmm, that's an idea. Wouldn't cost that much to do that. It would cost, you know, the seed to plant it twice, but hmm, that's something we might think about doing, actually. Otherwise, the field's just going to sit there for the next three or four months and not do anything for us. You know, the other thing, too, is my, my cedars are direct drills, so we don't even have to cultivate the field. We could just straight up plant it with grass. I, I think that's a good idea. I think we should do that. <clears throat> then we'll get a, you know, one hay harvest out of it before we turn it back into wheat. Plus, we're doing a little bit of crop rotation, too. Not that the game actually requires that, but it'd be realistic. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. And then I'll, I'll have even more grass to try and figure out what to do with it. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, I have been doing a little bit of research uh, and looking around on you know, with mods and things like that. And I think I've come up with a better solution for um, our silage situation. And actually, there's a couple things that I'm thinking about doing. <clears throat> and I'll just ch share those with you right now. So if we go into productions, I found this um, silage factory mod. Okay, um, and this thing costs three hundred fifty thousand dollars, so it's pretty darned expensive, and it has one point four million liters of storage in it. But it's got a nice, you know, drive-in uh, load-out and load-in trigger. It looks really nice, um, and it, it's really more of acts almost more like a production than it does a silo, um, and it, in fact, it is under productions. So. I kind of like the idea of this rather than the stave silos, which only hold a little over 500,000 and then we have to get another one. So, you know, we could store um, over twice as much silage in one of these as we, you know, as it would take for, for the two, uh, for two stave silos. Um, so what I'm thinking I'm probably going to do is... We'll keep the two stave silos that we've already invested in for at least the rest of this year. And I'm probably just going to have to keep moving, you know, silage out of them into our main, you know, 15 million liters uh, over here silo for the rest of this year. Because I can automate that process with auto drive. So, you know, it takes a little bit of time and it costs me a little bit of, you know, paying the driver money, but it's not really that painful to do. And then at the end of the year, after we do our big silage sale, we'll, we'll sell these. I think we'll move over to these, except for this isn't really going to fit very well over here. So there's a couple of potential places we could put, put these. Uh, I could put like five here. So like one, two, three, four, five. Um, and this would really be a pretty good spot for them. Now we would lose all this hay. But um, it, it's really not a bad spot for them. There's there's space, you know, for the for the vehicles to move in and out, and uh, I kind of like that spot. 
Another place we could put them is along the road here. So I could do like one, two, three, four along in this area. Um, this isn't really level though, so we'd have to do a little bit of finagling with the landscape to get that to work. The advantage of putting them over here though is that it's right alongside the road. So, you know, trips to the biogas plant would be nice. And uh, I am, I definitely have field 71 in my sights. However, if we if we bought 71, this is going to bring in so much more hay that we would need even more of these. But the cool thing about 71 when you buy it is you get all of this land right here too. So we could clear these trees out and then we could put in several more of these factories, you know, lining them up along here right across the road. So there's definitely some options there for us. Um, but, you know, I looked at, at various different options on the Mod Hub and... You know, there were other things kind of like this, but they were just way too OP. Like there was, there's one like lizard silo factory similar to this. It's only $75,000, but it has something like 15 million liters in it. It's just a little bit over the top, I think. <laughs> so, so I think we would probably um, invest in these. Now, there's a second part to all of this, though, and that is that I'm seriously starting to think about buying the biogas factory uh, or the biogas plant uh, and and not not necessarily the ones that we can put down ourselves but this you know the in game one over here um this is the 1 megawatt biogas plant um and we could actually buy this and what happens with these is then then I can have my silo silage rather be distributed to here which would happen automatically and we'd have to pay for it of course uh, through the distribution factor thingy. So it's not like we'd be doing it for free, but then I don't have to worry about moving the silage at all. And what happens here in the biogas plant is that the biogas plant produces electricity, methane, and uh, digestate. The first two just automatically convert to money. So, so you don't store like the, the electricity or methane, you just produce it and then you get paid for it. So we basically have a steady income and, and I guess it can be pretty substantial from what I've heard. Um, and then the digestate, you can actually use as fertilizer. So you could either, you could either sell it or, you know, you could, you could store it up and then use it as fertilizer as another form of fertilizer. Um, and that would also open up or give us access to these two silage bunkers here if we ever decided we wanted to you know, to utilize those too. But what that does is it means that then all my silage is just distributed to here. I no longer have that big haul of silage at the end of the year to make the money. And instead, you know, we're, we're bringing in uh, a fairly substantial monthly, uh, well, actually it happens every hour, I think, of money from the power that's generated and the methane that's generated from the plant. And that's kind of the end game with silage anyways here in Farming Simulator 22. So I'm starting to think about that, too, uh, especially, you know, once we do buy Field 71, and it is definitely in my plans to do so, we're going to have so much hay, it's just going to be ridiculous. So rather than handle the silage as an intermediate product, you know, let's let's just go all the way to the end game and, and buy the biogas plant and maybe even buy a few more and, you know, get into that business and, you know, make lots of money. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, guys. Um, it's not going to happen necessarily this year, but maybe in the next two or, you know, one to one to three years, we start moving in that direction. Okay, so anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, we've already invested in these. We already have silage in them. And, you know, we still have two more hay cuttings this year. And so we're going to just make this work for the rest of this year. And then when we get into next year, we're probably going to start moving in that direction you know, with the, with the silage factories. And, uh, I don't know that we'll be able to necessarily buy the biogas plant next year because it's, it's one and a half million dollars to buy that thing. It's very expensive, but it's definitely worth getting in the long run. Okay. So anyway, that kind of gives you a basic, basic idea of what I'm, I'm thinking. So, uh, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically pull out my three seeders here, a uh, direct drill seeders, load them up with seed and fertilizer. And we're just going to go over to 57 and we're going to plant grass. We might as well. Um, and that way we can get one, you know, hay cutting out of that field before we have to then in October convert it over to a wheat field. And then we'll, we'll put some winter wheat in. 
Uh, so I think that is what we're going to do. But first of all, I've got all of these vehicles, you know, that were left over from last episode when we did all the hay harvest that need to be cleaned up and repaired and refueled and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to do that. And then I'll bring you guys back uh, with an update when we're about ready to start uh, planting field 57 with some grass. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, we are about ready to hook these uh, cedars up here. So let's get the front one connected first. And then we want to drag this over to here. And get that one connected. And likewise, this one here. <coughs> okay. Now, get in here and we want to... Whoops. Uh, nope. Oh, one of these is still set to barley, so we got to make sure they're all set to grass, so... Okay, that one's grass. That one's grass. And that means all three of them are grass. Okay. And then we use the right mouse button to extend that. Left mouse button to extend that one all the way out and I think we're good to go and I've got them all loaded up with fertilizer too so yeah we're just gonna turn this into a grass field and get one cutting off of it and then in October uh, September or October anyways we will turn it into a uh, uh, we'll do some winter wheat on it is what we'll do so let's see can I do control V to get them all down yeah, that one's down. That one's down, but the front one is not. So I think I have to do that one manually. Okay, so before we totally commit to this. Let's just make sure that everything is grass here. Um, and yeah, looks like all three are grass. Okay, let's plant, plant some grass. I wonder if um, GPS will register the width of all three of these. Let's try it. So, why is GPS not turning on? Oh, wait, why isn't it turning on? Do I not have GPS on this tractor? I should have GPS on this tractor. Look. Yeah, four should enable it. Well, maybe I don't have GPS. I thought when I bought this, I added GPS to it. Uh, Control S or Alt C. Nope, I guess I don't have GPS on this tractor. I, I could have sworn I did it. Maybe maybe I bought it before before I installed the GPS mod. All right, well, we'll just do it the old fashioned way then.
All right, guys, we are finished uh, planting and rolling the field. Uh, next month after this germinates, I'll, I'll do another pass, probably with a, uh, some slurry uh, to give it the second application of fertilizer. And then, yeah, we'll have a, a nice hay crop. Uh, we'll, we'll, sh we'll only get one cutting out of it, but if we, you know, get a second stage cutting out of it, it should be pretty good. Are those just tire tracks? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, so anyway, I think we are finally finished with June. Man, we've spent several episodes in June. <laughs> it's been a busy month. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to advance uh, into July. Oh, yowzers. Uh, advance into July. Uh, so I'll bring you back on July 1st and uh, we'll do the next thing. So yeah, see you next month. All right, guys, it's July 1st. Let's take a look, first of all, at our money for June. Uh, we didn't purchase anything in June. We had $200,000 of construction costs, though, and that's because that's from all of the stuff we did for uh, the silos. Wow, that's a lot of money, too. Lord almighty. Um, and that, but that in, actually, that includes the silos. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, hold on. Sorry, my bad. That includes the $200,000 silos and then I guess a little bit of extra. Um, so yeah, that wasn't all like landscaping, uh, vehicle running costs, 18,000. And we spent quite a bit of repairs, but we use a lot, our vehicles a lot, uh, 10,000 for leasing costs. Uh, that's because we're now also leasing the, the two forage wagons and there's, was there something else that I would lease to own too? I can't remember. Um, but that's the majority of where that's coming from. Property maintenance is about the same. Production cost is about the same. Uh, we made $103,925. I think that was strictly from the greenhouses, uh, but the price, you know, the price is pretty low at this point in time. Uh, fuel cost 200 bucks, water cost 620. Uh, we paid workers for uh, driving workers, field workers, 8,000. And we paid, uh, pallet to distribution workers, 4,874. Uh, so we're currently sitting at uh, $318,400 uh, starting off in July here. So let's see. We got a, we got some chores that we need to do. And I want to uh, spread some slurry on field 57. So, yeah, let's, um, let's get the fent out and get ready to do that first. And we're going to need to... Uh, uh, lease a slurry spreader. I, I wonder if I should just go ahead and do a lease to own on that too. Um, let's look at that. Oh, we got a we got a, a Deutschfar uh, top liner for sale, which we of course don't need. Uh, so let's go here. Slurry tanks, and we've been getting this uh, Bomec uh, 4XL spreader here. I think right. Uh, or is it this one, the 21 meter? Yeah, I think it's the 21 meter we've been doing. So what's, how much bigger is this? That's 30 meters, but quite a bit more money. So yeah, I think, um, I guess the other question is where in the world I'm going to put it though. I actually, I could probably keep it on the slurry tank and park it all in the shed. So I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to lease to own this guy. Um, and until and unless you know something comes up in the sale, uh, so it's only going to cost us six hundred ninety-five dollars a day, but that goes you know gets deducted from the price for the you know uh, the lease to own. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab that. Well, you know, you know the thing is, is I don't I only use this on occasion, so maybe it doesn't make sense for us to lease to own it. Yeah, I don't think I will. I think we're just going to lease it, and eventually you know one will come up for sale and then we'll buy it. Uh, but we have to go get the tank first, of course. And our strawberry greenhouse is completely out of manure. Um, so we should probably hit that first. Just so we can keep it going. So let's head over there. We are going to uh, be running out of sugar here pretty quick. And so I'll probably just direct buy a, a small amount of sugar just to keep our productions going. 
until we can do sugar beets. Uh, speaking of which, um, let's see. Field nine is has has sugar beets planted by the computer farmers. That's the only field on the whole map, uh, but it's a decent size field. So my plan is to, when harvest time comes for sugar beets, which is going to be in October, November time, we will probably purchase that field, harvest the sugar beets off of it, and then I'll probably replant it with something else and then turn around and sell it again. So we'll essentially flip it, but we won't flip it without first replanting it. And that's, that's the rule uh, for that, for um, this series, which I have talked about in the past. Okay, so let's just go uh, fill the strawberry greenhouse up with manure. It's a smaller greenhouse, so it doesn't have the same capacity as ever as the bigger ones. The bigger ones are doing okay for the time being, but a few more months, and we're going to have to uh, do something with them too. I got the axle lock thing on on this, so it can be a bit of a pain in the neck to maneuver. But not as much as when the dolly's loose. Okay, so if we look at uh, our strawberry greenhouse, it's now full of manure. It's doing pretty good on seeds and water. All of the big greenhouses are, this is where they're pretty much all at. So yeah, probably another two months and we're going to have to, we're going to have to redo the seeds on them. Manure is actually not doing bad though. Uh, on all of these. Okay, so what else do we need to get done for chores? Uh, we need to bring milk over to the dairy because it's almost out. Uh, both of our silos are still fermenting, so they're in good shape. And we're going to have a bunch of wool, I'm sure, that we can bring over to the spinnery. And and there's eggs eggs that we need to pick up, and then we need to top the cows. Okay, so I think that's what we have. So let's get all that stuff done before we go spread our slurry. You know, looking at how much manure we still have in those greenhouses, it's possible <laughs> that lucked axle just really makes this thing janky. Uh, it's possible that we might have enough manure to support everything. I'm, you know, I'm guessing we, we're not going to have to put more manure in the greenhouses till probably mid to late fall. And I'm not planning on using this manure to do any fertilizing. So we could have enough. I don't know. We'll see. It will be interesting to see how it pans out. Um, okay, why aren't you tipping? You sh should be tipping. Uh, actually, you know what, though? I guess we don't need to tip it. We'll just leave it in here. I don't know why it wasn't tipping, though. I'm sure there's a reason for it. You know what, though? If we're going to keep... Oh, no, we're not going to keep. Never mind. I was going to say, if we're going to keep the slurry applicator attached to the tank, it's going to need more width. But we decided, or I decided, that I'm not going to lease to own it because it's just something we only use, you know, on occasion. So it really doesn't make sense to lease to own that. Stuff that we use frequently, like our rollers, for example, that does make sense. But not so much this. Okay, so let's hook up to you. And we'll fill you up with slurry. Didn't really line up on this very well. That seems to work though. Okay, that's pretty well lined up. Remove that course. We're pretty much just going to keep this the way that it is. 
uh, generate field work course. That looks pretty good. Do I have the width of this set correctly? Tool width. I didn't. I was going to say, man, that doesn't seem right. Okay. So, um, let's redo this. Glad we checked that. This should widen up significantly now. That's what we were looking for. Okay, cool. Uh, what if we do 13? Is it going to make change this little zigzag stuff in the center? Nope, looks like it's, it's going to be the same. What about 11? Still the same. Yeah, hi, cat. 10's even the same. Okay, yeah, let's just leave it that way. Uh, okay, so we generated the course, and we should be able to just start at the first waypoint and let course play do all the work. And we should see... Yep, the second application of fertilizer. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, while Course Play is doing that, let's jump into you. And I don't know if I have enough mixture here to top the cow. Yeah, we probably do. It's going to be close. Oh, wow, we use it all. Okay, we probably came really close to topping them all the way off, though. Let's see here. Yeah, really close. Okay. Um, so I'll probably wait and do a mixture next time around. And when I do that, I'll, I'll probably um, top off the straw too. We've got 9,000 liters of milk, so that's good. Uh, all the rest of the critters should be fine for the moment. Okay, so let's turn this off. And I want to go to uh, back to our pickup truck. And... I just have our, our new flatbed trailer still hooked up, as you can see, on the truck there. Just figured I might as well keep it connected. And we'll use this to move the wool and the eggs. I really like this trailer, man. It's nice. It's very nice. Okay, um, let's see, can we get around here? Yeah, we should be able to. Okay, takes care of the eggs. I do notice when I'm using my pickup in particular, and I have pallets on a flatbed, it just, as soon as I get up to speed, it, it starts to really lag, which is really odd. It doesn't do it when there aren't pallets on the, on the back, but when there are, it certainly does. Nice little load of eggs there. Okay. And uh, the last chore that we need to do is deliver the milk.
Oh, it looks like our slurry tanker is empty. So let's get the milk taken care of first though. I actually saw that when it first popped up, but I didn't fully register in my brain. Okay, so we're going to just give all of the milk to the dairy. And while that's going on, well, I guess we can just do that from the menu here. Um, let's go to here. And let's see. So we are, yeah, we're just about finished on sugar here. So it's going to be a few more months before we can do anything about that. So let's go ahead and buy some sugar. Um, a thousand liters for a thousand dollars. So the buck a liter. Let's just do that. And like, uh, actually we have lots of sugar still in here. Too bad I couldn't take some of this out and put it you know, put it in the uh, bakery, but it doesn't work that way. So yeah, let's just see if we can get by with a thousand liters because it doesn't go down very quickly. Just, this is the first time I've actually put any new sugar in here since I've had this production, believe it or not. Uh, okay, so everybody else should be in good shape. Uh, this is, no, nothing sells good in July, so I've already looked at that, so we don't need to worry about that. So we'll go park the milk tanker and then get that slurry tanker filled back up and then we might as well finish the field ourselves because I'm pretty much done with the chores. There isn't anything else I can think of right at the moment that I need to do. I'm just going to leave the pickup here too. Alright, let's get out to that field. There we go. I got it all folded up for us and everything. Okay, so it looks like he made maybe two passes. Or no, one pass and then some. Yeah, okay. So it'll probably take three tanks at least to do this whole field. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I can't remember last time how many tanks it took to do, but we don't have it on double application, do we? Activate doubled application rate. Activate normal. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think we do. We shouldn't. We don't want it because it's already got one application fertilizer from when we seeded it. You know, on second thought, just for accuracy, I think I'm going to let course play continue continue to do this uh, all right so we want to set this to near uh, to nearest waypoint and that should be good well they could have started a little further up but that's okay Looks like he is doing a little bit of overlap, too. All right, guys. Well, um, I think we're probably going to go ahead and wrap up the episode today because there's not really a whole lot more to do. Um, I will... You know, oh, actually, you know what? I think I'm Field 71 is up for contract again. I, I did mention to you guys, I think it was in April that I am going to continue doing only field 71 because it's just worth doing. Uh, let's look at that really quick. So if we go to contracts and we go to XX field 71 uh, and it's a silage this time. So what we could do with that is we could use our, well, you see, I don't know how that works on a contract. So we'd, we'll have to, uh, bail it, I think. Um, but we might be able to take the extra silage bales and put them in our silo. Uh, or even if we can't, though, I mean, we'll just hang on to the bales and sell them, you know, the extra bales that we get. We'll just sell them. So, uh, too bad that wasn't hay, though. I wouldn't mind putting a little more hay in the barn. 
but we get 25, almost 25,000 for hay. And I think we only get 21, or I mean, for silage, we only get 21,000 for hay. So yeah, let's do it. Okay. But we're going to, as usual, borrow the items, but I'm going to do this off camera guys. You've seen me do it so many times. <laughs> um, so I'll just do that off camera and uh, that's kind of a nice cultivating contract there. I could, Ooh, what's this? 68, 12,000. There's two big harvesting contracts we could do. And, you know, since we have our own harvester, I'll think about these because that's another $24,000 plus, you know, the extra grain and stuff there. Uh, I'll think about those just because we have our own big harvester now. Um, and because I don't have anything else really going on in July. Maybe, uh, but we're definitely doing this because we've already taken it. So anyway, I'm gonna let you go here. And um, in the next episode, most likely we, uh, I'll, I will move into August before I bring you guys back for the next episode. And then in August, we'll have our September. No, actually September will be our, our third hay cutting, I think. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.